Hi, I'm Shola. I'm a public speaking coach. I'm based in London. I work with clients all over the world and my business is called Speak Up Like a Diva and Speak Up and Shine. And I want to ask you a question today, which is how important is body language? Now, in a way, I, I may end up contradicting myself because I share when I'm running workshops and so on. I, of course, talk about body language and the importance of having a strong stance and posture and you know what to do with your hands and why you shouldn't do this and why this is different than that and all sorts of wonderful things about what people can take from our gestures and the way that we carry ourselves. But today I want to share with you a, a time where I went to see a speaker and this speaker didn't use her hands, she didn't pace around the stage, she didn't stand in three positions in the stage to represent past, present and future. She didn't do a lot of the things that as public speakers we are sometimes taught to do. She didn't do any of those. And yet at the end of her presentation, she just went down a storm. Everybody stood up, there was a huge standing ovation for her and it was an amazing, amazing presentation, amazing talk. And that speaker was um, somebody who has been sort of reimagined in film. And the woman's name is Dame Stella Remington. And she was the head of MI5, which is the spy organization um, in the UK. She was the head, like, head of MI5 for a number of years. She was the first woman to head the organization. And um, also in films, James Bond films that have been made, um, the more recent James Bond films had an actress called Judy Dench playing a character called M. I think she's called M. And um, that character was based on Dame Stella Remington. So I was lucky enough to go along to a, a luncheon and Dame Stella was the keynote speaker. Now, Dame Stella, when it was her time to speak, she stood up and she was behind a table. She didn't have a stage to pace around on. She just stood up behind a table. And she had a microphone in her hand, but she didn't gesture much at all. In fact, I can't remember any of her gestures. Maybe her arm wasn't just by its, it, her side, but there wasn't a lot of gesticulation or, well, I'm making this point, one, two, three, etc. past, present, future. She didn't do any of that. She just spoke. But what she had to say was so fascinating and so engaging that you could have heard a pin drop. The audience was completely silent. She made us laugh. She talked about some of the dangers that she faced and some of the dangers her family faced in that role. So it wasn't only laughter, it wasn't only politics. She talked about what she personally had had to forsake to take that particular position. And we had an emotional roller coaster. We went back in history, we looked to the future, we looked at what she thought politically was gonna happen and what she thought in, of, about the world security situation. And she really took us on an amazing journey. And all of that was without any of these um, devices that you're often taught when you learn public speaking. And, and it was incredible. And I thought, well, I wanted to share this because you will learn, you know, different teachers and trainers will teach you different things. And of course, it's brilliant when you're learning to know what's available. But ultimately, you've got to decide what's for you. What kind of speaker do you want to be? Having practiced moving around the stage versus standing still or behind a lectern, what suits you best? which had the greatest impact on the audience, which is really the question that you need to be asking. Was it necessary to do things that felt a bit uncomfortable to you to increase the audience's enjoyment and comprehension? Or could you, like Dame Stella, stand still, but with the power of your words and the conviction behind those words, could that be enough to transport your audience and have them jumping up to give you a standing ovation at the end. So there are rules and there are rules, and, and as they say, rules are there to be broken. 
So I tell you this not to make you chuck out everything you've ever heard about body language and how to portray gravitas and all those sorts of things, but just to understand that there are many different ways and that you can choose and you can be the sort of speaker that you want to be and you can excel whatever style that you have. So that's it from me, just a quick one today. If you do want to learn about body language from a public speaking trainer, then of course you can come to see me. And you know, I, do, I try not to do things by the book and I work with individuals to suit their style and to, to help them deliver in the best way they possibly can. So please do get in touch, drop me an email and we'll go from there. Take care, bye.